Hartford Regionals just wrapped up and we saw some of the weirdest decks performing well, including Fusion Mew taking down the entire Regionals, as well as Arc Dura Umbreon making another spot in the top eight. Five Mews in top 16 after Mew has had a relatively dead presence in the metagame for the last couple months. Hey guys, my name is Rahul Reddy. Today we're going to break down the top eight of the Hartford Regionals, look at the lists, talk about why they performed the way they did, look at a little bit of the statistics, and you know, we'll move from there. So Hartford just wrapped up. It was a 1,059 player event. A lot of really top name players performing very, very well. You can see through the top of the numbers that a lot of RCS Duraldon on Umbreons performed quite well across the tournament. We saw Mew VMAX performing very well uh, as well throughout the tournament. Two decks that have been kind of written off to some extent. We've seen Gardevoir, uh, Lost Box, Lugia. These decks getting a lot of hype, garnering a lot of hype. But then we come to this full circle and these decks are now performing very, very well. Now, why did these decks perform super well? Um, well, the metagame shifted to a position where Arceus decks can hold their toe, to, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Lugia decks, and Arceus decks, specifically paired with Duraldon, can just attack with Arceus or Duraldon six times effectively and win the game. Like, you don't have to work super hard to win your games. Um, in those matchups, you just need to get Arc Energy or whatever. And Mew thrives off of beating Arceus and... I think it has a really good matchup into it because Mew of any capacity can just go path judge. Arceus can't star birth, can't find their pieces, and everything in the Arceus deck gets one shot by a Mew with Choice Belt. Um, so it's one of those decks that just doesn't trade efficiently into Mew VMAX, um, and I think that becomes a great problem for it. Uh, Gardevoir doesn't have a great matchup into it either because Umbreon can just hunt down the Gardevoirs on the bench, and with three copies of Lost City, these cards get Lost Zone pretty easily. Um, yeah, we're, we see like a lot of very interesting decks popping up uh but this format is basically solved let's take a look at some of the decks the winning list played by rowan stavenal played fusion mew playing one copy of meloetta and one copy of deoxys deoxys being for the lost box matchup and also you can swing 140 in the early game with photon boost uh, meloetta being your op optimal donk card uh, rowan opting to play three copies of seal stone saying that hey this is like one of the most pivotal cards to find my combo playing four copies of trekking shoes which is a card that i don't think has been played in mew for quite a while now uh, just letting you dig through your deck a little bit further, and I guess maybe finding that one extra piece to keep going is really what you need in Mew, and he just has maximized the cards you can see on turn one without needing Genesex in play to get to as many Genesex in play to continue playing the game. One copy of Path and one copy of Crystal Cave, Crystal Cave being for the Lost Box matchup to simply just heal a little bit of the damage. I don't know if it's actually a relevant um, enough card in that matchup to deal with that number, but I obviously did not play the deck, so I can't really speak on it. I would think maybe one Lost City would be more impactful to deal with something like a Drapion, but uh, what do I know? In second place, we had uh, Grant Shen playing Lugia. This is Regan Ratzoff's exact 60 from the Portland Regional Championships. Not a single card changed. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Very good philosophy. Uh, I think this is the staple moving forward for Lugia list for the rest of this format, specifically just because there's no... Uh, you, you have an answer to everything in the format. The two T-Tars plus Evatol are just amazing attackers uh, against basically everything you need it to be. The Urshifu deals with pretty much everything else in the format, including these new Arceus variants that are popping up. You deal with the Duraludon. Um, it's just an overall good deck. And then third place was Regan Ratzoff playing the same 60 as well. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Back-to-back -back regional top fours, a finals, and a third from Regan. Uh, very impressive uh, accolades back-to-back uh, -back with the same 60. I think it speaks volumes that these two players did not change a single card from uh, two weeks ago, and they were able to perform and place in the top 60, or top thing. Uh, in fourth, we had Luke Smith playing DT Emu, another deck that, you know, has been very popular recently. Luke playing a very consistent build with two Feather Balls, two Nest Balls, in addition to the four VIP passes. So a lot of search cards, three Forest Seal Stones, just making it so Luke also has adopted the method of, hey, my Forest Seal Stone is the most important card to let me play the game, because everything in my deck besides this or Choreo is a V Pokemon. So as long as I can get to playing the game, I can win the game. Uh, and that's basically what Luke said. And he did just that up until top four when he got Lugia playing four copies of Path, three copies of Judge. Uh, your Lugia matchup strategy seems to be just Judge Path and hope they can't find their way out of it. If they do find their way out of it, you're probably in a lot of trouble. Four copies of Vacuum, so very, very heavy on the Path Vacuum. Just making sure you can draw cards, get through your deck. A lot of four ofs, a very beautiful list to look at. Uh, and Mew is Mew. In fifth place, we had Danny playing uh, Kyogre Lost Box. Uh, four ofs down the line. Uh, just You just use your early game turbo pressure to go into a late game Kyogre with two Pokestops to dig deeper into your deck. And the four energy recycler is a very interesting uh 
tech because basically you're saying my four energy recycler trades at the end of the game are going to catapult me into winning the game if I can get to that position. Um, because sometimes you lost on one in the early game and all of a sudden the Kyogre build gets a little bit sketchy because you need to be able to recycler and attack in another way. Greninja plus stop and chorus gets you through your deck so, so quickly and then you can get to the Kyogre. In sixth place, we had Raven Long playing uh, Kyogre as well, but this time he's not playing all the V Pokemon. He's playing a Snorlax and an Articuno as the supplementary uh, attackers in this build, uh, Articuno to paralyze in the Lugia matchup, Gardevoir matchup, decks that really don't can't get out of it, and then the Snorlax to deal <clears throat> early game pressure damage while you're building up to this Kyogre, uh, because Cram into Snorlax one shots pretty much everything in the format, um, and then you basically just build up to it towards the end of the game. Only one stop and one beach court. I don't really like the split of stadiums. I think you want to kind of commit to one or the other, um, but yeah, Raymond just kind of opting to play a little bit of a hybrid, just committing to the six. Uh, water five psychic just saying i don't need to play other energy types it's not really necessary it's going to clog up my deck um and using articuno efficiently in seventh we had ryan harris playing arc Drill on umbreon very similar to the list that got top eight two weeks ago in portland played by nathan strafford um opting to play a copy of single strike energy instead in here giving you that extra boost damage you might need so single strike energy plus dte on umbreon now one shots things like the radzard like um mu v max uh, like Gardevoir EX, like now you have that one shot without having to be scared that you need to put three manual energies onto the Umbreon. You also have Duralon, which can use it to hit to 240, and 240 goes through Dragonite, which gives you another attacker that can one shot a Dragonite um, without needing a choice belt or something like that. Um, list looks very consistent, very good. I think this deck is a very cool archetype. I think Nathan and his friends were onto something very, very amazing. I think this is going to be an archetype that lasts to the end of the format. Uh, and then we have in eighth place Shashi Narain playing Mew DTE as well. This one, and opting not to play a copy of the Oracorio, but again, we see the three seal stone, a testament to how powerful that is. Shashi playing a third copy of boss over um, another supporter, potentially uh, playing the two feather, two nest as well. So again, very much consistency Four paths to the peaks and three vacuums, basically saying, Hey, if I can path judge my opponents, I should be able to win the game. One copy of lost city though, to deal with that drapion and two choice belts, as opposed to something like in Luke's list where we did not see that. I think only one choice, but one cleansing gloves in Luke's. So this gives us a, more options to just power through. So looking at the better game, what is the overall like summary? Well, 24% of day two was Arceus decks. So moving forward, you guys should be prepared for Arceus. Lost Zone Box is not going anywhere. Top players all chose to bring it. A lot of top players brought Lost Zone Box. 22.52% of day two was Lost Box. Um, Mew, 18% of day two. Mew didn't have much of a presence in the last couple of events, but we're seeing decks like Lugia and Gardevoir kind of fall down lower and the Mew and RCS rising up this rank. So keep that in mind preparing into the next tournament. If you guys are going to Milwaukee or Fresno, that'll wrap up this season or this format, I guess. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoy this kind of content and I'll catch you guys on the flip.